Hey everyone, it's Mike Andes and you're listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast. Today I'm talking about how you should be running your personal finances like a business. And regardless of whether or not you have a business, this is how I suggest you think about your personal finances. Before we get into today's show though, a big thank you to today's sponsor, which is Gusto. If you haven't already, go to gusto.com slash bootcamp, run your first payroll and get three months completely free. One thing that's really cool about Gusto is regardless of where you're at in the country, you just enter in your state and your locality and it does all the federal and state and all the rest of the taxes that you got to do on your payroll uh, when you pay your, your employees. So it takes care of all of that, makes it a very easy to understand for you and for your employees. Check it out today. Go to gusto.com slash bootcamp. Okay, so uh, a couple weeks ago, I did a Q&A episode on personal finances for small business owners. And I did a, bunch of, a whole bunch of Q&A, but then several people responded back and said, hey, we want to know a little bit more about a couple of the things you said about running your personal finances like a business. Now, I have made an episode about this a couple years ago, but hey, it was a couple years ago. So let's go ahead and go over some of these things that I would recommend. And again, you might not own a business, but I still recommend this is how you operate your personal finances. Uh, now, this is coming from someone who is entrepreneurial and does have businesses. So take that with a grain of salt too. But I really think that people should run their businesses, or sorry, their personal finances like businesses because a business is always looking for profitability, efficiency, and making sure at the end of the day they're sustainable in the long term. I think those are the same elements that should be focused on in your personal finances. So the first thing that I do that's a little bit different, and again, this is not the way that everyone should do it, but I promise you if you have any business acumen, a, a kind of translating some of the business stuff that you know into the personal finance is going to help you a lot and it helps me a lot. All right, so what do I do? I use QuickBooks as my way to take care, take care and keep track of my personal finances. Kind of a crazy idea. Using QuickBooks is always thought of as like, oh, you need to have a business. No, you can run your QuickBooks like a business for your personal finances. What I mean by that is to have a QuickBooks account, all you need to have is a bank account, your credit cards, anything that you use for your personal finances, your personal expenses, your personal income needs to be on that QuickBooks account. And then you allocate every single expense, every single transaction, every single deposit. And then you literally have a profit and loss statement at the end of every single month and every quarter and every year based upon your personal finances. So when I have all of my businesses, all of them have separate QuickBooks accounts. I have a separate QuickBooks account just for my personal finances. And that leads me to sec the second thing that I do when, my, when it comes to my personal finances is I want to make it easy for categorization. Okay, so a lot of people think about budgets. The, my, the problem I have with budgets is it takes me longer to figure out where I am taking money from and which account and or if I'm doing an envelope system. Like I just do not have the time for that. I'd much rather focus on categorization of my expenses and then getting a report and making decisions based upon that if I need to cut in certain areas. Now, how do I cut time out of the equation? Because I do not want to spend a lot of time categorizing. Use your credit cards to categorize at the register. All right, now I'm just using that as a regular term, register. For a lot of you, it's, you know, you're actually checking out online or you're swiping somewhere at a gas station, wherever it might be. Use your credit card as a way to quickly categorize if it's a business expense or if you're writing this off for a company you work for or if you have a person, it is a personal expense. So what I do is I take my credit cards, I take a Sharpie, I write personal on that one. Bam. That means that whenever I am out and about and I'm buying myself a smoothie, which I love Woods Coffee smoothies, spinach, blueberry, almond milk with a protein, love it. Now, that's a personal expense. Unless I'm doing something for business specifically, uh, I'm going to use that as a personal expense. So whip out the credit card that has personal written on it. Now, if I'm going to be doing something uh, with the franchisees and I'm going to get a smoothie with the franchisees and buying them all a drink, for example, I'm not going to whip out the personal card. I'm going to whip out the same car a different card that has the same design, but on it I've written with Sharpie, franchise. So guess what? When I'm using that credit card, I know that it's going to show up in the account it's going to show up on the correct QuickBooks account. It's going to show up on the correct, uh, you know, I'm not going to have to try to like move things around. I don't need to have all of my credit cards on my personal QuickBooks account. I only use my personal uh, 
QuickBooks account with my personal credit cards and my personal bank accounts. Very, very simple. Anything that is flown through those accounts is going to be personal, and it, now it's just a quick matter of categorization, which would take really no more than a couple minutes a week as long as you do it a few times a week. So, number one, QuickBooks. Number two, categorize as much as you possibly can at the register because you do not want to spend time and you do not want to be putting every single one of your credit cards from across your businesses or you know, if you have a company card that you use, you do not want to be putting those all into your personal QuickBooks, just the ones that are personal. So categorize at the till. Number three is think about it like a business and that is your personal expenses, your personal finances, are you profitable? Like at the end of the month, do you have, did you make more than you spent? That's the bottom line for profit at a business. Did you make more than you spent? For your personal expenses, it should be looked at the same way. And you're like, well, I don't have a business. I just have income. Okay, well, let's pretend like you're a business. Just call yourself Mike Andy's LLC, whatever you want to call yourself. The enterprise of Mike Andy's, whatever you want to call it. And you're just going to be running your QuickBooks and you're going to take your income. Maybe it's a paycheck. Maybe you only get two or three deposits every single month. Those are your paychecks. And you literally, they go into your account as income. And then all your other expenses coming through your credit card are just expenses. But at the end of the month, you get an income statement. And that is, what did I spend and how much did I make? And was I profitable? Because guess what? If you're not profitable, the same way that a business is not sustainable, the way, same way that a business is not interesting if it's losing money, the same way that if a business is losing money, you start like trying to fix things, is the same way you should be fo thinking about your personal finances, and that is, look, if, if I don't have more money coming in than I have going out, we got a problem. we got to fix something, and if you're not profitable at the end of the month, the quarter, the year, in your personal finances, two things have got to happen. One of two things. Either A, you've got to make more revenue, more income, it's very simple here, or number two is cut expenses. It's very, very simple. Now, I'm not a big fan of budgeting because of the time element, but this is the kind of thing I love to do because I'm a business owner and most people here listening either have entrepreneurial tendencies or you are a business owner and you like tracking numbers and you like seeing reports and you are interested in seeing profit margins and how much money is going where and you're not so enthused about creating a budget. Trust me, you're not alone. This is the way to do it. Run it like a business. Think about it in terms of not how much money did I make from my paycheck or how much did I make in distributions from my company. Think about it as that's the income for the business. And I'm the business. Okay? Number four. There's this thing called FIRE, and that is financially independent, retire early. It's a new movement, especially around internet entrepreneurs, podcasters, people like that, that their goal is to basically retire early and be financially independent. Now, the number one way to make your dream of becoming financially independent sooner than later is to cut your expenses. Because the definition of financially independent is that you can sustainably have a higher, a higher income than expenses, i.e. you're profitable every month, i.e. you're profitable every quarter. The same way that Tesla is thinking about going into the S&P 500 because they've had four consecutive quarters of profitability, the same way that investors in the stock market look at any company really positively if they have a consistent track record of profitability is the same way that when you're coming to think about your own personal finances and think about the security that you have in your personal finances, you become financially independent the moment when you become consistently able to constantly turn a profit in the business called your name LLC or whatever you want to call it. You're the business. You are the business. You make the income, whether it be your paycheck or not, and then your expenses. The number one way to get there faster is reducing your expenses. And I cannot overemphasize this enough, especially for young entrepreneurs. And I know there's a lot of them out there listening because I'm younger. I can't say this enough, and that is reduce, like cut out the waste. Every single dollar you're spending right now could go back into the business, and, or if you have a business, or into generating more wealth for yourself by learning even, investing yourself in online courses, learning education, and becoming more profitable, more uh, valuable to businesses if you're an employee. That's what you got to be focused on when you're young. Cut those expenses. The sooner you can cut those expenses, the sooner you can become independently wealthy and financially independent. Number five, when it comes to personal expenses and personal finances, is really you've got to 
you must watch recurring expenses. This is the scheme because everyone is willing to pay an extra $10 a month for Netflix and five more dollars a month for this and $10 a month for Spotify and $10 for this a month. And well, guess what? They really start to add up. If you actually look over the course of a year, all your recurring transactions, you would be shocked. All of a sudden, the dollar a month for the iCloud doesn't, you know, starts to add up when it's like, oh, and now it's $5. Ah, it's nothing. Oh, the app that you spend $4 a month or, or the subscription that you have for music or you, you have for video streaming. And why do you need five video streaming apps and you're paying for all of them? Why do you need to have a cable service and a video streaming? And like, my goodness, you can cut a lot of those expenses out. Okay. Yeah, like the number one way to be able to invest back in your business is cutting your personal expenses. If you're young and you don't have a bunch of, of dependents, you've got to really start thinking about variable costs and fixed costs. The same way that we think about a business. In your business, we look at fixed costs like property and a big you know, equipment or a building as fixed costs. And, and, and you're, like, you're like, look, no matter what happens this month, how much money we sp spend, we've got to pay the rent. Let's look at that as a fixed expense. In your business. The same thing goes for your personal finances. What are the fixed costs? What do you have to spend no matter what? Do you have to pay insurance? Yeah, you probably should need to pay insurance for your vehicle. It's good to have a legal vehicle operating. Okay, that's a fixed expense. Is rent? Yeah, rent at my house. I've got to live somewhere. I don't need to live in a $500,000 house. I can live in a smaller house. That's fine, but that is a fixed expense. What is that fixed expense? Knowing what your fixed expenses are and then tracking your variable expenses is important too because the variable expenses are things that are kind of discretionary. You know, the vacation, you know, you don't have to have it. It's not fixed. It happens once in a blue moon. Uh, you know, the vacation or going on a shopping spree or whatever you might do, going out to eat versus eating at home. These are all things that are discretionary or variable expenses. They go up and down with the time of year. Uh, you, you know, maybe you travel, things like that. Those are all variable expenses. The same way that we look at fixed and variable expenses in business, you can think about the same thing in your personal finances. So, my number one tip to you today, right now, to take action is go start a QuickBooks account. And you're like, I don't like QuickBooks. I don't want to pay $15 a month. Okay, you can do Wave Apps, waveapps.com. It's free. It's completely free to track your expenses and do exactly what I've told, about, told you so far. I only use QuickBooks because I'm so familiar with it with all my other businesses that it makes it fast and easy and efficient. And guess what? If I'm not fast and efficient at categorization of my expenses, there's no point in doing it. It, I might as well do the envelope system where there's cash in an envelope underneath my bed and I don't even remember it and I'm out at a gas station without the cash and I'm like, oh, I'll just use my credit card. No, you've got to stick to the rules. The rules are simply use the credit cards and the accounts that are marked personal. It makes it very easy to categorize and it will save you a lot of time. And I tr promise you, you're going to be, you, the same way that you know, I expect you to know your numbers as a business owner, the same way I expect you to be able to be woken up at 3 a.m. and know your profitability numbers, know your customer acquisition costs, those those numbers are important for you as a business owner, but they're just as important for you as a personal finance, in your personal finances, if you wanna build wealth, and you've gotta know, like, what's my income gonna be this month? What's my income gonna be next year? Am I growing? Am I in an industry? Am I at a job? And Am I at an employer where I can get more money, or I can get a piece of the profit sharing, or I can get some equity, or I can start investing in somewhere where I can get some recurring revenue in the form of distributions or dividends? These are things you gotta think about. I hope this helped somebody out there. You've been listening to Mike Andes, the Business Bootcamp Podcast. Until next time, be great. Nothing else pays.